Matthew 19 to 20 Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you and I am with you always to the close of age The church continues to make Christ present in human history by obeying this apostolic mandate given by Jesus before ascending into heaven in the first century, Christianity began to spread under the guidance of St. Peter and the Apostles and afterwards their successors. The number of Christ followers steadily increased. Christianity landed in Africa through David Livingstone, a Scottish missionary in the 1800s. It was later brought to Kenya by Johann Ludwig Graf and Johann Rebman of the Church Missionary Society. Still, most people in the interior parts of the continent continued to practice their own religions undisturbed. That caused an increase of Christian missions to Africa, driven by the anti-slavery crusade and the interests of the Europeans colonizing Africa. After independence in Kenya, there was a focused process of indigenization of the church leadership. By the 1970s, most of the mainstream churches had African leaders. Some of the Africans who took over the church leadership were determined to break from the colonialist legacy, a main barrier which hindered the church growth. Some of the African leaders established church and mission structures that gave people the freedom of worship, rebuilt a sense of community, and met people's needs. Africans got an opportunity to practice Christianity with limited imperial baggage. In the country, the church has cooperated with the state in matters of development. The church has endeavored to spearhead education, and it was the church that introduced vocational training institutions commonly called the village polytechnics. The church provided badly needed special schools, such as the schools for the blind, schools for the deaf, and even the schools for the physically handicapped. Over 50% of the medical work that is hospitals and clinics in the rural areas falls under the ambit of the church. The church is also heavily involved in rural development programs that greatly argument the efforts of the government. In such instances, the church is seen as a partner with the government in helping alleviate human suffering. Originally, Christianity came as an agent of change, a beacon of hope. However, the spread of Christianity paved way for commercial speculators, which brings us to the present-day church. It has now destabilized the status quo, bringing new opportunities to some and undermining the power of others. Earlier, churches were few and well-structured from the foundation left by the missionaries. Today, at least 85.5% of the country's 50 million population are Christian with the majority being church goers, according to the 2019 census, with most going to the evangelical churches and Catholic church as the next most popular denomination. This huge demand has transformed the church to a big business. According to the Christian century, the number of African Christians grew from 19 million in the 1900s to half a billion in 2015, and it's due to reach a billion no later than the 2040s. By that point, in terms of raw numbers, Africa will be by far the largest Christian continent. Today, barely 140 days to the 2022 general elections, Kenya's churchgoers have been used to smartly dress politicians rolling up in push cars to attend services on both Saturdays and Sundays. 
political leaders tend to offer huge cash donations amounting to million in exchange for a chance to preach politics at the pulpit. Politicians know this will benefit them from the church masses and so do the church leaders. As the number of churches continues to be explosive, we meet John Kamau, one of the owners of the Faith Evangelical Churches Ministry, Kiambu, on his take on politicians using the pulpit to campaign. Hello, my name is John Kamau, founder and owner of Faith Evangelical Church Ministries. My take on politicians using pulpits to campaign, I think it's wrong. But you cannot say that they are not allowed to use the pulpit because uh, the church is open to sinners. Jesus goes along to say this when he says that the hospital is the house of the sick and so is the church the house of redemption. However, I disagree with government regulating churches. And why? Because where two or more people gather, there is a church. And so when we regulate, uh, when we regulate churches, actually we are limiting the freedom of worship. However, I agree that church registration and regulation is required to close down fake churches. That is my take on the matter. Thank you. However, despite a few established churches which have banned politicians from the pulpit, accusing them of making divisive remarks, days to the elections, Kenyan's churches are playing political stages. The faith economy is big business and a fundraiser with the right politician can greatly improve the fortunes of the church. The rise in the number of churches being established has been a topic that is in most of the population's mouth. According to research conducted, there have been more than 4,000 registered churches in Kenya. It has been noted that most of these churches are tapping into the vulnerability of Kenyans in seeking to get answers into their economic issues and more. This begs the question. Are all these emerging churches being registered by the National Council of Churches, NCCK? Is it a calling or are they business ventures? Ida Odinga, the wife of the former Prime Minister of Kenya, raised some question in regard to the rapid growing number of churches during a book launch and this is what she had to say. When I sat in the center of my home in Bono, a place called Baruch, and I I put a P on the map, and the P is one kilometer, and I radiate it around from the center of my home, and make it 360 degrees. Inside that area of my home, there are 200 churches. Some of them, you find a man and his wife and his three children, they have a church. I went to school to have a church. But we are not being very effective, that's it. We are not being very effective. Let's pull our resources together and do a church that all of us can pay. But why do they, why are they so eager to have everybody to have a church, every village to have a church? It's supposed to find two churches in one room. Why, why is it that? What is it? Churches are meant to bring us together. The Bible still remains the only book that will lead us and teach us about Christianity and Christ. Why is it that we have so many churches? And that is where Professor is coming. And that is why we have organization known as NCCK, National Council of Churches of Kenya. Let all the churches be registered. We therefore decided to also interview two more people about the question of whether the government should regulate churches by establishing certain laws 
and they had the following to say churches in kenya should be regulated considering the rampant growth there is need to be skeptical um so you know due to the untaxed money churches in kenya gain an upper advantage so you you'd see trends where there's money laundering money as in there's the skeptics in in how churches in kenya uh use their money you know and then there is a growing trend where pastors have more than 10 bodyguards surely what are they guarding you know it is paramount to have a body that oversees operations in churches and also noise regulation is really important there has when you wake up in the morning on a sunday or when they have choir practices there is noise on the road that these people are shouting we need a, a body that allows churches to have a certain guard because this is an institution and all the institutions are regulated we just be just because yes religion is respected but there is a way to maintain a civil society My two cents on whether churches should be regulated in Kenya or not. Um at first I was inclined more to saying, ah, oh, you know, let people do what they want to do, let people worship what whoever they want to worship, which is okay. Um let people believe in in what they want to believe in. But recently so many funny videos of churches doing them the most are surfacing online every single day it's like it's like daily dose of churches doing crazy stuff but then again um i do i do respect the fact that there are people who want something to believe in there are people who want to hold on to something hope just a little bit of a, a thing you know so i do i do support um or rather i'm still inclined to think that um let people do what they want to do um they will only let their brains do the thinking for them you know the moment you go to church and see you know you let you allow yourself to think and see ah okay i'm also saying enough to know what the scriptures are saying you know take what you can and leave what you can't but um and let people believe in what they want to believe in let people do what they want to do maybe it's what they're holding on to yeah churches however have always had a role in shaping societies from social welfare economics natural law which would later influence the creation of international law politics architecture, literature, personal hygiene, and family life. The church is now facing serious challenges which threaten the destruction of the Christian faith. Some of these challenges involve compromise with the standards of the world or walking the path of the world. Today, the church seems to be influenced more by the society rather than the society be affected by the church. It is an undeniable fact that a majority of the people in our society profess to be Christian, yet the spiritual condition of our society is worse than before. While the church has been trying to use all means to reach out to people, we have not met in much success in improving the spiritual condition of the society. I believe that if the spiritual condition of the society is the church's main focus, with the help of God, we shall make straight. Second Corinthians seven to one says, "Beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God." The truth is that today there is biblical illiteracy, a widespread deficiency of basic element of Christian character, morality, and ethics. By observation there have been moral dysfunctions among profaring Christian than on the secular society. It appears alcohol, substance abuse, domestic violence, greediness, sexual immorality and promiscuity are commonly noticed with church goers. Our pulpits and Christian platforms are silent when it comes to the issue of sin and immoral behavior. This shows how deeply the church in quotes is married to the world and its evolution over time. But after all is said and done, Christianity and religion is a personal decision. With the freedom of worship, one is entitled to choose the church they want to go to and worship.